Hey everybody, Jeff from Programming vs. World. Today we're going to start our dive into adaptive forms. I'm going to use the term start lightly because as most people have noted in the comments, when you first go to create an adaptive form with a fresh quick start, there's no templates in there. Which, which means uh, you go to create, you can never get to step two. And here I'll show you what I mean. If we log in and go to our forms section, our forms and documents, and we say create, uh, an adaptive form. We won't worry about these other types right now. Uh, you'll notice you get this selector that says to select a template and this will come up completely blank and there seems to be no way to get to step two of this wizard. And that's because out of the box, uh, 6 forward 6 3 don't have the feature packs necessary to uh, create forms on them. And I don't know if it's an undersight or an oversight or it's just the fact that not many people use it so it's not installed by default. So to, today on the tutorial, what I'm going to show you to do is how to get this set up and how to get it started. And it's relatively easy. If you don't know much about the navigation on the front, this little compass here will take you back to the main navigation anytime that you want. And this hammer, of course, is supposed to take you to all the tools. So at any time you need to get back to the navigation section where forms is, you can use the compass. But we'll go to tools, uh, deployment, and packages. And we're going to click on an icon we don't normally go into in the lower versions of AEM, and we probably should, but it's this community option here on the end that says share. And this will take you to, uh, well, it'll take you to a place where Adobe stores all the pre-built packages ready to go into AEM, but you're going to have to log in using your Adobe ID. Now it has a tendency to stick here and look like it's not doing anything. And in some cases it actually isn't doing anything. And, and for instance, my case here, uh, sometimes just be patient, give it 30 seconds to a minute or so. And if you still don't see any response out of it, then just stop it and refresh it. I think sometimes the, uh, the XHR, XHR request gets lost on its way out. Sometimes on the second or third time it logs in just fine. Like now. <laughs> okay. So when we get to this screen, what we want to do, is we want to search for the appropriate Adobe packages that we want to install. And it's this has some quirks. For instance, let me show you. If I start typing AEM Forms 6.4, you'll notice that up here in my title bar, it stopped at the word 6. Like right when I typed the period there, <laughs> it decided to end it at 6. The other thing you may notice is it defaults to an OR search, which means I get all these irrelevant results. So if we leave it AEM Forms 6.4 and we flip to this AND button, we should get all the things that match all of those keywords. And we didn't, and that, we'll just click the AND button again. It's really quirky like this, and it's important to note that because you're going to start searching for stuff one day and all these irrelevant results are going to come in. You won't be able to figure out why. And if that's the case, just make sure you're on and and click it again. So here we can see all the forms packages we need uh, based upon what operating system they're running on. It's interesting that AIX and Solaris have ones. But the one I'm interested in here is, is OS X. If you're running Windows, you would want this one below. So when we click on that package, uh, we basically come to a screen that allows us to download and install it right into the package manager. Um, this is without us having to touch anything or go into the downloads folder or anything. But before we do that, we want to look at the details. And there's an important section here that I want you to make sure you look at because there's nothing worse than waiting an hour for this to download and then turn around and find that you have a hidden dependency. And in this case, we do. There is a service pack required before we can install this. And I'm running 6.4. I can show you how we can determine that. If we go back to this screen and we click on this little help button here and say about Adobe Experience Manager, we can see that I'm running 6.4.0. So I'm gonna need that service pack before we can continue. So now I'm gonna go back to my package share and search for that. And I think I can do that with the word service pack, all one word. I don't know if I can get away with that. See, it did it to me again. Now I'll click the end button. It's just one of those quirks that you have to get used to when you're using this thing. Um, 640 feature pack. I'm willing to bet it's this guy right here. 
Okay, we'll look at the details of this one just to make sure there are no dependencies, but I already know there is it. Um, we're going to use the download button on this one because it's relatively small. If you did want to download it to your local machine, though, you can come over here to the Assets tab and say Download to Disk, and it'll just put it right in your Downloads directory. This thing also suffers the same problem the login does, is sometimes the clicks seem to get lost, and when they do, you just have to repeat them. So I'm going to click on the download button. If you get this dialog, it's a pretty good indication it's going to respond. If you don't, just wait. Sometimes it's taken, during different demos, it's taken sometimes uh, two minutes before that shows up. So I'm not going to bore you with the download here, and I'm going to speed this section up. Once it's fully downloaded, um, you'll notice that this tag changes to downloaded. This is not exactly clear what has happened. But it has staged this file and it's ready to install it. So if we click on it, it'll actually take us back to the package manager where we can see it here in the menu. And from right here, we can click the install button and say, yes, we really want to install. Now this install takes somewhere in the neighborhood of two to five minutes, depending upon the machine. And it's going to cause all the bundles to restart. So I'm not going to bore you by waiting on this to occur. My little quick start uh, progress bar has gone away. And the first thing I want to do is go back here to the AEM forms. I'm going to refresh this. And I'm going to go into my help about again, about Adobe Experience Manager. And it has upgraded to 641. Good. So now we are secure and nobody can hack us. At least I think, which I hope. Anyway, so we'll go back to the community now. And if we, uh, that's going to make me log in again. Now, if we go back and we search for our uh, AEM forms package again, uh, we should have met this dependency and we won't have any uh, red indicators in our package manager when we get to it. So let's do AEM forms 641. And this time it has decided not to give me either one of the <laughs> and or ors. There we go. I told you it's quirky. You just have to. You have to get used to clicking on and a couple times to make sure this stuff comes up and I'm just telling you, it's just the quirkiness of it. it. Once you get used to that, you can find everything that you need to in here. We're going to grab AM Form 641 OS X, or if you guys are using Windows, I'd grab the one that ends in .win. This time we'll do it a little bit different. We'll just click this download link and I'll show you how this works. Um, it'll just put it right here in your downloads folder. <laughs> Yes, it's not much to that, right? That's the easiest tutorial ever. Um, I'm not going to bore you waiting for this to download because it will take a minute. My network connection today is incredibly slow. So um, I'm going to pause, and when we come back, we'll have it downloaded, and I'll show you how to upload it into your package manager. Okay, it's downloaded. It's now sitting in my downloads directory that, where Chrome has put it. If we go back to the package manager, we can now manually upload this package by clicking this button here. We can say Browse. I probably have downloaded this multiple times. Sitting right here. You can say OK. And this was a local to local upload, so it, pro it it's probably going to run a little bit faster than you may see it if you're installing this in a production environment or whatever. But now we'll notice there's a, there's a dependency section down here that's turned blue, and it actually gives you a link to the package that we installed. If for any reason you see this as red, it means either you, you didn't install it or the wrong one was installed. And I hopefully I didn't tell you the wrong one because this is the one that we just installed during the demo. So just keep an eye on the dependencies and you'll know right away because the install button or one of these buttons is red. I don't remember which one it is, but one of these will illuminate red to tell you there's a problem. Uh, this install is going to take a little bit as well and I'm not gonna bore you with it. We'll click the install button. Just know that at the end of this install, it's going to restart all the bundles, but it's also going to ask you to restart AEM itself. 
And uh, it's a good idea to do that anyway. And in my case, I'm still running off the quick start jar. I haven't, I didn't actually go into the CRX quick start instance and run bin start. So it'll be a good thing for me to do anyway. It'll help the performance a little bit. So I'm not going to bore you with this install. This one will take a while. I've had this take five minutes on a rehearsal. I was given a live demo one time where it took eight minutes and I ran out of stuff to talk about eight minutes later. So <laughs> I'm going to pause this and uh, I'll pick it back up when it's complete. Actually, I'll pick it back up when it shows you the, um, the prompt to tell you to reboot. Okay, we're back and now we have this unusual pop-up. I don't remember seeing this in earlier versions of AEM, but it was pretty cool that it happened. It happened to me in 6.3 and it's happened to me in 6.4 so far, where we have a pop-up that says, please restart the instance to complete the installation. Now, the interesting part of this is if you go into logs and look right now, the bundles are shutting down. So I don't know if this was a previous indicator um, just in, that it gives you just as a safety net in case it can't stop things. As a matter of fact, let's do that now and <clears throat> we'll take a look and drag this one over here. Well, maybe it's not shutting down. Maybe it's just being, um, now it's, it looked like it's in the middle of a restart, right? Cause it's re-registering bundles. So it restarted the bundles. Um, it restarted the OSGI container, but that doesn't mean that the install is complete. So in order to kill this, I'm just going to control C out of this. I'm going to make sure that this starts shutting everything down. And when I'm back in my directory or uh, back at the top level, I just, this is a brand new install. So I just hit uh, the Java minus jar on that quick start. So I'm just going to go into the quick start itself and say bin start to start it back up. And in a few seconds here, we will have our instance fired back up again. Okay, I paused that till it started back up. It only took a few seconds for it to actually start back up again, but it gave me some time to regroup here. And I'm going to refresh my uh, my AEM tab here. So let me back out for just a moment and show you where I am again, just in case, just, just so nobody gets lost. If we go back to the main navigation and we go into Forms, Forms and Documents, this is where we're going to create our new form instance for the rest of the tutorial. Uh, you'll notice you created a few things in here. I created three folders, basically one for uh, interactive communication and letters. Uh, we'll talk about this much later. This is a very advanced feature and it's designed for sort of for PDF kits um, or uh, customer, um, you know, sign up kits or that kind of thing where you're going to give an independent person access to fill out all this stuff and you kind of want all that communication bundled together. There's a folder for reference fragments. Reference fragments are like custom controls. Um, we'll look at them in the next tutorial, even though we won't build them right away. Um, and the reference templates for document of record. Document of record just simply means the final PDF that's being generated. <clears throat> but now uh, we're getting off topic. Now, if I go into create and say adaptive forms, we'll ignore these other types for right now. Uh, we can see that there are three templates in here. Now this is actually deceiving. That doesn't mean there's three visual look and feels. There, uh, each one of these can have uh, a, a bunch of different themes and uh, those themes are already installed as well. They, they, they gave you a basic with Adobe sign, which is just a form that has a signature block at the end. We're not gonna be able to use it because I don't have a personal account that has an account to Adobe sign. If Adobe wants to hook me up, please. <laughs> but I can't show you that part because I can't even turn that thing on without a valid account and I don't want it charging me. Um, there's a basic form, which is one that's sort of already filled out. We're gonna ignore that one. And then there's a blank one, which is just an empty canvas that we can start dropping stuff on. So I wanna stop here and show you what we're going to be doing. And uh, <clears throat> I struggled for a while to find a really, uh, I don't wanna insult these people's form. But I wanted to find a really bad PDF form, like one that we could 
seriously improve by making it adaptive. And I found this guy online, and this is obviously for some schools uh, for ordering DVDs. I don't even know what these DVDs are for. I just found this form by doing a Google search for a specific PDF. And we'll notice that this has all the same typical problems that PDF forms have uh, you know, back in the day, which were a billing address and shipping address things, which if the billing address is the same as the shipping address, why waste all this re real estate, right? Why, why couldn't we have a check mark that when we click it, that goes away? So that's something we could do to improve this. We have method of payment uh, boxes um, where we have debit is in or check enclosed is in there, but then we only have fields for card number. There's no check number. Um, so we have to write in the names of each and every DVD that's on there. I don't even know what to call that. We have a card number and expiration date. Uh, it doesn't care about the CCV, which is interesting. I wonder how that works. And like we have a number of DVDs, each cost a certain amount with a percent sale tax and then three different shipping options and then a total. And we're making the user sort of total all that up. So these are all things that adaptive forms could handle relatively well. The show hide functionality is something very common with adaptive forms. Um, uh, multiple uh, entry is another thing that we can do that PDFs couldn't do. We can add a plus button and add DVDs to the list we, and, and calculated fields. Uh, so this is a great form to show you almost everything that adaptive forms could do to improve this. So we're going to use this as the test dummy in the, in the next tutorial. But anyway, that's the end of tutorial one. I'm Jeff. This is Program vs. World. Next tutorial, we're actually going to start building a form. So you guys tune in and I'm out of here.